Hi, oh, welcome back. This is Kalo Gamer. It's uh, just time for something a little bit different. Um, I've decided to throw a, a video up on uh, console maintenance. Now, I'm looking at uh, a Japanese multi-controller. Now, this is one that I purchased recently um, from an eBay seller. It had a couple of issues with it. It uh, was a little bit dirty, but I, I paid next to nothing for it. It was less than a tenner. Um, I've stripped it, cleaned it, um, put it back together. It's all working fine. Um, as I say, I'm going to try and throw a bit of a video together now um, regarding uh, console maintenance and particularly uh, retro controller maintenance. Now, uh, obviously, these controllers have had a fair bit of use in the past. Um, I mean, every controller out there, they've all got issues. They've all got uh, various problems. Um, the traditional Sega Saturn pad is probably one of the most reliable. Um, one of the least reliable is probably the uh, Sega Dreamcast pad. Um, I've actually got a strict Dreamcast pad here. Now this is the uh, the main internal board for a, for a Dreamcast pad. Uh, this was a uh, faulty control pad. Um, the problems I experienced with these controllers, uh, the official ones in the past, were the first models or the early models had problems with the triggers. Now uh, the plastic. Uh, pieces which rotated actually shear away. Now, let's, let's see if I can get that to focus on there. If you can see there, the harbour that the, the trigger sits in, it's got a clear crack, and also the plastic form of the trigger itself does tend to snap. Now, these have been repaired. Super glue, that one's actually sheared right off now. In there. If I lift this up, you'll see it. a plastic stem fits inside the harbour that it rotates about. That's actually sheared right off. And uh, in the past, I've repaired these. What I've done, I've just trying to clip this one. What I've done in the past is I've actually had to repair these and what I've done I've cut a piece of plastic and super glued and reinforced the little pegs that they rotate around. Now it's they're okay as a temporary fix this sort of thing, but uh, obviously Sega did realise there was an issue with the Dreamcast pad and uh, later revisions uh, cured this pretty much. But the early Dreamcast pads did have an issue with uh, a design fault or a weakness with the triggers. As you can see the little aperture there where the, the magnet sits. I've, I've removed that magnet and I'll explain why in a moment why there's no magnet in there. I've actually I actually use this amongst other old pads and bits and pieces that I've got as uh, purely as a like a maintenance stock so I can strip and salvage and cannibalize to repair functioning pads or keep pads functioning. As I say, this controller I stripped and cleaned. Uh, there was an issue with it, and when I cleaned it, the the one magnet that's situated inside the trigger, which is a, was in the left trigger, uh, must have become dislodged. To say, I tried and tested this when I purchased it, it was fine. Once I stripped it, cleaned it all out, one of the magnets seems to have uh, become dislodged from the trigger. So, what I did, I had to uh, take one out of that Dreamcast trigger and replace it into this one. Uh, it does sit in a slightly different aperture in the trigger, but uh, providing you get the uh, positive and the negative in the right position, it will work. Well, anyway, that's just a, a brief uh, outline of the sort of things that I'll be taking a look at in this video. It's maintenance of retro control pads. So, uh, 
what I'll do, I'm not actually going to strip one of these down. We're just going to start with something simple. We're going to start with a, a controller that I actually know, one of my controllers that does actually need a bit of maintenance on it. Uh, the buttons are getting, starting to get a little bit spongy. It probably just needs a good clean out and uh, repositioning of the uh, contacts inside. And what we'll do, we'll also uh, give some of the moving parts a, a slight um, lubrication with some of this uh, multi purpose silicon grease, which uh, does help with the, the movement of the, the buttons and so. So, what I'll do, I'll uh, remove the screws from this and uh, we'll take a look at the inside. Right, I've removed uh, all but for one screw from this unit, from this control pad, which is a Super Famicom controller. It's an original Japanese one. Um, a lot of retro consoles are actually used a standard screw for the fixing of the casings and for the controllers. Now, more modern consoles actually use tamper proof screws, um, notably, uh, it's like a, a triform one, and you also get one like a like a like a Torx key, so you may actually have to shop around and get those sort of things if you want to uh, disassemble a more modern control pad. But I do know that uh, mouse controllers up to the Dreamcast um, time scale, I think even Xbox uh, One controllers, uh, they all use just a standard. Phillips screw screw, and so you can use a standard screwdriver to uh, to disassemble those. So I've uh, just got one screw to remove now, and then we'll take a. Look. Okay, so we've uh, split the controller. The rear is removed. The screws are kept safe there. Right now, you've got the uh, the controller board. It's the main circuit board inside. And you've got the two little uh, attach boards as well for the left right triggers. What we'll do now is we'll remove the uh, left and right trigger mountings, what you do, they're, they're fixed on a little metal spindle and if you just pull those out, they'll lift out we'll place those there keep them together, and what we do, we remove the cable attachment just keep the cable steady and uh, stop any snags pulling of the cable as it's fitted Remove those, the connectors, sorry. Yeah. What we'll do is pull out the main board. As you can see, the main board itself is quite simplistic. It's not really a lot on there. It's one, one chip. And you've just got these uh, contact points. So, what we'll do, we'll just give those a bit of a clean up with a bit of uh, alcohol. Um, you can use uh, rubbing alcohol, or sometimes I've used a you know cheap aftershave or something like that. Just on a bit of a cotton board or a Q-tip, just give everything a bit of a rub around with the connection points. Um, just make sure everything's nice and clean. Gets rid of any residue. It's built up over the time from the carbon contacts. So we'll move the circuit board out of the way. We'll give that one a bit of a clean up in a minute. And what we'll do, we'll continue with the strip of the, uh, the controller, the top half. And as you can see, uh, there are markings inside there stating where bits and pieces go, so it's uh, it's quite easy to follow. Um, I always say if in doubt, always make a little diagram or something, so you can uh, always refer to that if you do get a little bit uh, lost with the uh, reassembly process. So what we'll do, we'll take these contacts out. So those can be cleaned up as well. The contact points there, you can see a little bit of wear on those, but providing the, the rubbers are not split, uh, they can be reused. They look in a decent shape actually. What we'll do is just uh, tip this up, get some pieces out there, and what it does is just uh, releases all the moving parts. I'm going to say generally. Um, what you'll find is when you strip it, you'll find uh, bits of gum and gunk and whatever um, between uh, the spacings of the four-way pad. Oops, sorry, 
between the spacings of the four way pad and uh, and where the buttons move so what I generally try, try to do is uh, something like this, I'd give it a bit of a soak in some uh, warm uh, soapy water uh, give it a bit of a rub around with, uh, with an old uh, tooth brush gets in between all the, uh, the nooks and crannies uh, gets rid of all the, the palm jam that you, that you generally uh, tend to find in between the uh, the two mating valves of the control pad this one's not that bad actually, it's, it's quite clean um, I have cleaned this once before uh, when I purchased it as I say I didn't buy this uh, Super Famicom from new, it was, it was used so the control pads again were used but uh, I did give them a brief clean but uh, it's been a while now so I decided to strip this one down and just perform a bit of uh, maintenance on it so what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean these bits up in a bit of soapy water just uh, just make sure that you don't lose any bits and pieces and uh, then we'll get ready for the final clean and reassemble and lubrication ok so uh, while the uh, plastic components are soaking, cleaning uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the uh, the circuit board just with a bit of uh, alcohol on a cotton bud you can see there just, just give it a bit of a light rub to clean off any residue so I'm just gonna give them a rub over it's not really a lot of residue or any uh, carbon coming off these connections actually they're in pretty good shape I think they're put the pr sorry not really showing you much there I think the problem actually lies with the uh, actual rubber contactors, to be honest. With this one, that along with uh, this pad, as I say, the buttons tend to feel a bit sticky, and I think they just need a bit of lubrication, a bit of cleaning. So, obviously, you do get a sort of uh, palm jam effect. Clean the, uh, the trigger parts as well. And the light rub. Again, what you want to do is just get rid of any build ups that are on there. You can see there's a little bit of discoloration on the end of the q tip, but there isn't really a lot. They were quite clean, in all honesty. As I say, we'll do the same with the, uh, the contactors. I have to put this down. What we'll do, we'll give these a bit of a clean over as well. Let's clean them up. So really this is quite simple maintenance really. And again, check the rubbers for, uh, for any splits or damages. Too bad, no splits in there. That's all good. So if they are split, you can always uh, interchange them with one some other controllers. So, so I do tend to pick up a lot of uh, old controllers when I see them out and about. If you can get them at a you know bargain price, because these things obviously the older they get, the more obsolete they become. And if the parts are interchangeable. You know, it's, it's always a good thing to have a few spares knocking about. So there's nothing worse than trying to play a video game and your controller's busted or getting into making connection on there. It's, it's really no fun at all. Right, quite happy with that. Okay, that's what we'll do. We'll. Uh, Grab the plastic bits and pieces, uh, make sure they're nice, clean, and dry. Uh, we'll lubricate all the parts and get them back together. So, we've uh, got all our uh, main components back from cleaning. Uh, as I say, just make sure all the bits and pieces are dry, that you've uh, removed all residue of uh, water from in between all the little bits and pieces, the little uh, crevices and cavities uh, in all of the, uh, the parts. 
you'll find uh, you're probably just better giving them a good blow or uh, so if you've got access to compressed air in any way or shape or form you're probably better off just giving it a good blast just to make sure that you've uh, cleared out all those uh, areas where the moisture can hold so what we're going to do we're going to get all these bits and pieces back together like, uh, what we'll do first is uh, what I'm going to do with a not the used cotton bud, with a clean cotton bud I'm going to uh, apply some uh, of this silicon uh, grease to uh, the areas that uh, allow movement on the pad what I'll do, I'll uh, place um, just very light smear around these uh, openings for the buttons just on the inside, just to lubricate the buttons um, also we'll do similar around the uh, that internal diameter there where the cross pad sits so uh, that'll allow for a little bit of uh, lubrication so to help it move also place a, a small spot onto the centre so it rotates around on the main board see that sits in between this uh, the rubber section, the rubber contactors and uh, I'll also place light smear on the spindles for the left and right control and uh, that's it so I'll apply that grease now so I just have to pause recording for, for a moment or I'll get rid of that get that ready right I've applied a very small amount of the uh, the silicon grease to the uh, end of the cotton bud so I'm get that to focus a little bit clearer see it's only a very small amount the thing with silicon grease, you've got to be very careful with it. Don't get it actually onto the uh, the contactor points. You only want to use this for lubrication of the plastic or rubber parts. You don't want to get this onto any um, connection points. So don't apply the silicon grease to any of these areas on the pad or the rubber contactors. Ensure that you keep those nice and clean. That's why they're being rubbed with the alcohol. So what we'll do, four way pad out, I'm just going to give this a very light, very light smear with the silicon grease. I'm not going to bother with the rubber contactor area. I could probably just very, very lightly give that a rub. That's it, that's all you need there. And around the button areas, might apply a little bit more. That's what we'll do. Just apply a little bit more to the bottom areas. Actually, just apply a bit there to where the uh, bits, the protruding sections of the button sit inside the the apertures. Just a little bit around there. Just give it a little bit of lubrication. It's obviously plastic on plastic. You're just going to get wear. And so you get that sticky button effect after a while. Also, just going to put a very light dab where the spindles, the metal spindles for left and right, fit into the, uh, the base of the control pad. Just put a little bit more on there. It's very awkward working one hand. Just put a little bit on there, a little bit on there. Right, let's put a little bit on the top. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place the buttons into position and uh, I'll just cut the video for now and join the back up and I've placed the deep pad and the buttons and back Right, the, uh, the left and right hand uh, triggers are in place, the metal spindles are in place I just popped a tiny little bit of grease on the spindles as I place them into position What we'll do now, we'll uh, drop those buttons into position Literally dropped them into position. So what we'll do, so you can see the yellow at the bottom sits into place. You can have these interchanged. You can see you can have them uh, 180 degrees to one another. It doesn't really matter. They will only fit in two positions. Though. We've got to put the drop the blue button in there. Drop the 
the red button in there. Okay, so we've got the buttons into position. Right, what we'll do, get the contactor, let's sit the contactor in position. Careful not to touch the contactors. What we'll do is sort of sit this over here to, to raise it up. Stop the buttons pushing the uh, the rubber connector, the rubber sorry rubber contactors out of position. What we'll do is I'll get the rubber contactor for the D pad. Drop that one in situ. I did put a very very small amount of silicon grease on the uh, the ball section of the D pad, so that when that runs on the uh, the main board control the board and you get a bit a little bit of lubrication there. We'll drop start and select buttons in there. And what I'll attempt to do is we'll uh, I'll put the circuit board uh, back over the top of the pad and uh, I'll cut okay so I'll pop the circuit board back over the pad over the uh, rubber connectors and buttons, it's just sitting in place there. What we'll do, we'll try to place this rubber graphite connector into there. Contacts back in there. It's tricky to do with one hand. Sit there in place. It's sitting there. Look at that movement. Yes, we've got that movement there. So what I'll do, I'll just rearrange the cable now, so that it's uh, gripped, the cable grips into place, and then we'll lower uh, it. Okay, so the cable grips in place. What I'll just left now is to uh, fit the uh, rear of the pad and to uh, screw back into position. Uh, before you screw it back into position, just make sure that you haven't uh, trapped any cables or anything or wires in between the two sections, and just make sure that all your buttons and everything are all uh, hunky dory and in the correct position. <laughs> if in doubt, compare it with uh, another one or likewise. Okay, so we'll just uh, fix that one back together, screw it together, and then we'll uh, give it a little bit of a test. Okay, so we're all uh, reassembled. It's all back together. It's been uh, nice and clean. Feels uh, slightly improved. It's got a little bit more smoothness to it. So I'm going to start select and feel. It feel pretty good considering it's, it's like 21, 24, 23 years old, something like that. Yeah, same with the buttons, they feel, they feel pretty good. And so the the triggers are nice. Yep, so what we'll do is give this one a test drive now. Um, stick a Super Famicom game on and give it a whirl. Just make sure it's working. I might actually show a bit of footage on there. Okay, so we're just going to trial out the control pad now. It's uh, plugged in there. This is the control pad. Super Famicom. I'm just going to give this one a quick test just to make sure everything's working okay. Sorry about the footage. Okay, that's it. We've got the four way pads, not a problem there. Feels pretty good. Yeah. We've got the uh, right's working fine, left's working fine. Shoulder buttons are fine.
classic game F Zero. So the Y button's working fine. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. Bit of maintenance work there on the control pad. And there you go. So, thanks for viewing anyway, and I hope that uh, video was uh, helpful in some way to someone out there.